Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and welcome to another edition of Breaking News. Today is Tuesday, the 20th day of August 2024. And as always, we have some very important headlines to bring to you that have come across the wire in the recent hours that again show that the Bible is absolutely correct in everything it predicts about what the circumstances of the world will be at the time of the end of the age before Jesus Christ returns and the events that precede it. Day after day after day here, you have been watching incredible precision. That's all we can say, how uh, the idea that certain writers writing from 2,000 years ago to 3,500 years ago could get it right when speaking about future unknowns is literally unheard of. It's not, though, when you understand that God of the Bible is behind all of this, as we will see. All right, what's going on? Sinwar, the head of uh, Hamas, believes the latest rounds of talks is a bluff, and he is seeking to expand the conflict beyond Gaza. At the same time, Egypt's al-Sisi told Antony Blinken that a possible regional conflict could take place, a conflict that is difficult to imagine. Uh, bereaved families tell the prime minister, for the sake of Israel's children, do not say no, or say no, do not say yes to a reckless deal. And another worrisome story, Jewish voters fear going back to a time of persecution under Kamala Harris, should she be elected president. And another very, very frightening idea here. Uh, in the UK, a keyboard warrior was actually sentenced to three years in prison for posts he made on formal, on X, which is formerly Twitter. Again, some very worrisome headlines. Let's get to them. Headline number one, Sinwar believes the latest talks are a bluff. He's seeking to expand the conflict beyond Gaza. Hamas chief Yahya Sinwar believes the latest round of hostage talks negotiation are meant to grant Israel further time to continue its military offensive against the Gaza ruling terror group. This is from the Wall Street Journal, citing Arab mediators. Mediators say Sinwar is seeking to intensify pressure on Israel by expanding the conflict beyond Gaza, including, and here's the real worrisome part, launching attacks from the West Bank. And we're going to talk more about that. The West Bank, Judea, and Samaria is now becoming a hotbed for terrorists and Hamas's supporters there, which brings, again, another front against Israel. There's some seven fronts that they're fighting terrorism right now, including Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, the West Bank, Gaza, Iran, and Yemen. And so this is getting worse and worse. And so his comments are included. This is Sinwar in a report on the attempted suicide bombing in Tel Aviv that happened the other day. And it was claimed by Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad, identifying the attackers at Palestinian from the West Bank. Fortunately, it, this could have been horrific. Uh, it, the, and the suicide bomber blew himself up before he got to the synagogue he was going to. Now, if this is Sinwar's final stance, which seems consistent with his previous behavior, then he's trying to instigate a regional war. Will he succeed? And that's the question. Well, headline number two shows how worrisome this is. Egyptian President al-Sisi tells Antony Blinken the time has come to end the war and promote peace. They had a meeting today uh, in Egypt where Blinken uh, was told the time has come to end the war, act rationally and promote peace and diplomacy. This is according to the Office of the Egyptian Presidency. In addition, it was reported that the two discussed mediation efforts for a ceasefire and emphasized their desire to restore security and stability to the region. Well, that's all well and good. He also warned that the risk of a Gaza war expanding it in a regional way, and I like this quote, is difficult to imagine. And that's true. They know this started the end game of this. Who knows how terrible it would be? Who would be involved if all seven fronts that are against Israel started attacking them? In other words, the West Bank, Lebanon, Syria, uh, Iraq, um, Iran itself, the Houthis, and then, uh, you know, Gaza, Hamas continues on with what little they have. This would be uh, this would be devastating to the whole region. So it sounds all well and good that time has come to promote peace, but you need two to tango and you need a peace partner. And you certainly don't have that in uh, Sinwar. So we'll keep an eye on this, but it doesn't look good. Now, at the same time, our third headline, bereaved families to the prime minister. For the sake of Israel's children, say no to a reckless deal. This is from the Israel National News. Parents of fallen soldiers urge Prime Minister Netanyahu to say no to a deal which would harm Israel's security. Look into the eyes of our children. Make a deal, but not one that harms Israel's security. 
The bereaved parents of the Heroes Forum on Tuesday met with Netanyahu following reports of a new ceasefire prisoner swap deal with Hamas may be closed. Now, there's a number of examples they give here, which are rather, you know, scary. Danny Steinberg, father of the late Colonel Yo Yotanan, Yotanan Steinberg, a commander of the Nahal Brigade, said, let us offer the prime minister support in continuing to stand up to the pressures from within and without. In a previous meeting with him, the prime minister was determined and sent clear messages that he would keep the promises to bring down Hamas's rule and bring back all the hostages. We have come to hear what's truly happening. I call on the prime minister to stand behind the promises he made. Another person whose son was killed in the Battle of Nahal Oz command post, that's one right at the border there with Gaza on October 7th, said at the start of the meeting, we have come to ensure that the prime minister is still with us in his determination to protect the state of Israel's security. Today, 19 years ago, we were evicted from our homes in Gush Katif and see what it caused? The lesson must be learned. We must not agree to a reckless deal. And that, of course, is the area in which is now... Uh, basic of Gaza, which uh, was abandoned by Jews by the settlements. They took something like, if I recall correctly, 10 settlements that were in the area, at least out of out of there, gave it to uh, the Palestinians to rule. And the next year they voted for Hamas. And we've seen what's happened ever since. Now, this other one is a real interesting one, too. And it, it, it points to the problem. A father of a captain who was killed in battle said, this meeting comes at a very critical hour for the nation of Israel. On the table is a deal which you are very afraid will harm Israel's security. I present you a photograph which was taken the year of the Shalit deal was signed. In this photo, you see two 10-year-old children among them, and that's his kids, and one of them is held hostage in Gaza. We call you today, Prime Minister, say no to a second Shalit deal, say no to our deal that will cause Israel's security to regress. The Shalit deal, by the way, um, again, made a dozen or so years ago, one Israeli soldier was traded for over 1,000 Palestinian prisoners, over 1,000, and include, included the 1,000 was Yahya Sinwar, who was you know, a murderer and who is now, of course, the leader of Hamas, and all, as well as many other Hamas lieutenants, leaders, and murderers were also released uh, years ago during that uh, uh, agreement that Israel made. And finally, another one said, uh, prime, uh, side, uh, they don't understand why he's thinking about this. In the most optimistic uh, scenario, in my eyes, the prime minister will sign a deal which 30 hostages will be released, over half of whom are not alive. I will not see my son for another two years. Uh, and Nothing good will happen if this is unthinkable. In other words, don't do a deal for 30 prisoners, you know, that Hamas is holding to be released, and 15 of them are just bodies of those who have already been murdered by Hamas. Okay, Israel has been making bad deals since 1983. There is a story we had that listed them all rather than going through. We'll just give you the idea of where it started. In 1983, there were six Israeli soldiers that were kidnapped by the PA, the Palestinian Authority, by the terrorists that were there. They were traded for over 4,000 prisoners, 4,000 thousand Palestinian prisoners were traded for six Israelis. And ever since then, like the Shalit deal, over 1,000 uh, terrorist uh, prisoners, including terrorist murders, were released for one man. And what these, these are the families of people who have been killed, the soldiers who have been killed fighting in Gaza and saying, please, please do not do this. Don't release, uh, don't do a deal that releases uh, these murderers back into the world. All right. Headline number four is another worrisome thing. Jewish voters fear going back in time of persecution under a Kamala Harris. Will Harris condemn the sanctioned regime, regime against Israeli Jews? A scare tactic reminiscent of the dark ages of Europe. Jewish delegates to the Democratic National Convention in Chicago are easy eager to see what Vice President Harris has to say. American Jews are amongst her most prominent donors and many want to vote for her. Historically, 70 to 80% of the Jews have voted for the Democratic presidential candidate. But for the first time in American political history, there is broad Jewish hesitation, as there should be. 
There is growing fear among the Democrats that the 2024 election for Jews might turn out to be what the 64 election was for Southerners, an historic switch from Democrat to Republican, a reluctant one in this case, driven by basic human survival instinct. And the article goes on to say Judaism in the midst of a dual assault, a physical one coming from Hamas, Iran, and its proxies, and an ideological one coming from the West. The International Criminal Court, the International Court of Justice are setting up the legal ground to arrest Jews en masse. European countries like France have already announced that they would collaborate just as they did 80 years ago when arrest warrants were issued against Jews. This is for, you know, anticipating the Nazi regime. And so the Biden administration, although initially taking a strong stance supporting Jewish, the state of Jewish defense, uh, did not take action against the ICC, did not take action against the ICJ. In other words, they didn't uh, stop and say, look, you can't do this and take any action to keep them from doing things like this. And the problem is there was an executive order in February of this year that was originally misunderstood to be about sanctioning Israeli criminals engaged in deplorable violence against Palestinian Arabs. Well, they should be, again, they should be t uh, sanctioned. However, as the year progressed, the bigger impact became evident. The executive order gave a license to sanction Israeli Jews to the Treasury and State Departments. And indeed, it has been using the, this lethal license uh, to basically sanction those who have raised money for the cause of Israel. And so uh, the executive order also sets the ground for theoretical sanctioning of the property of Israeli Jews. Now get this explaining that sanctions are imposed against those who, quote, undermine the foreign policy objectives of the United States, including the viability of a two-state solution. Uh, don't miss that last line. Undermine the foreign policy objectives of the United States, including the viability of a two-state solution. Well, a two-state solution would not only harm Israel if that happened, but also the United States. In our book, 25 Signs, we're near the end, we make it clear. As their enemies have done to Israel, so God will do to them. And basically, we've seen historically nations and people groups who have attempted to destroy Israel have themselves been destroyed, have themselves been judged by God. We give five historical examples from the Bible of these different nations who try to support Israel's you know, entrance to the promised land and thwart their progress while we're there. And God pronounced judgment on all of them. And these people groups don't exist anymore as unique people groups. They were all judged by God, as the Bible says. And we gave a warning to the United States of America, don't do this. But sadly, this is where we are headed. So we will keep mentioning this story over and over again and keep an eye on this. And again, uh, this is from our book, 25 Signs. We're near the end. It is a free download from our website, Educating Our World. And uh, one of our 12 books on Bible prophecy. And please take advantage of it. 25 Signs. We're near the end. Everything is free. We never charge for anything here. And so please use the resources that are available to you. And finally, another frightening story at the end. UK keyboard warrior sentenced to three years in prison for posts that he made over X, formerly Twitter. He's put in jail in Britain for three years over posts that he made. His name is Wayne O'Rourke. He's been sentenced to three years in prison for stirring up racial hatred during the recent, recent anti-migration migration protests and riots. According to the local Lincolnshire Free Press, O'Rourke has shared false information about the Southport mass stabbing attack that left three young girls dead, suggesting that the killer had been a Muslim or an illegal migrant, neither of which were true. He gave his 90,000 followers advice on how to remain anonymous during protests, something left-wing activist groups do all the time, and they tell their followers ahead of contentious protests. Passing the sentence, Judge Katarina Knight accused O'Rourke of instigating the riots uh, through his social media posts, the flames fanned by keyboard warriors like you. Um, Again, he, there are a number of posts that he made, and his defense attorney said, look, his client was caught up in all the media frenzy in the wake of the Southport mass stabbing. Remember where these three young girls were murdered by this uh, 17, now 18-year-old uh, young boy from Rwanda. And uh, again, the, the point that she's making, look, he didn't set up his account to do this. Uh, he wants to re-educate himself on the things that got wrong, but he got caught up in the, in the heat of it all. But that doesn't matter, it seems. Commenting on the case, the Lincolnshire Chief Superintendent, Kate Anderson, said, this charge demonstrate we will take fast and decisive action, now get this, against anyone suspected of sharing harmful content online. 
We retain a commitment to proactively police and keep people safe across the country. This action shows that everyone is responsible for their actions, whether in public or online. Now, again, look at what they're saying. This charge demonstrates that we will take fast and decisive action against anyone suspected of sharing harmful content online. We retain a commitment to proactively police and keep us, keep people safe across the country and even citizens in other countries that make statements that seemingly are harmful to the local political you know, view. They want to go after them and, and arrest them. So governmental control of the citizens of the world will reach its apex. We know from scripture under the final Antichrist, where Revelation 13 says nobody can buy or sell without the mark of the beast. Now, this type of action taken by governments in a future globalist setting is frightening, but it doesn't happen overnight. The more power the governments take, the more we're moving towards this time where the government will have unlimited power. Final Antichrist, we know from Revelation 13, will have unlimited power to cause anyone, you know, force everyone to worship the beast and the mark of the beast, take that on their right hand or forehead with it, with pain of death, you know, being the result if you don't. Now, again, we deal with this in one of our books on Bible prophecy called The Final Antichrist, The Coming Seas, or we take, you know, we, it's very thorough, by the way, where we go through all the uh, history of uh, what the Bible has to say about this, the history of the belief in Antichrist, and what's going to happen in the future. So again, another free book to take advantage of. All right, a lot of things going on. It's not good for Israel. And it's very foreboding of what might happen in the near future. We don't know. Again, we're not sure, but we take it one day at a time. But we do know this, and this is why we do breaking news. We do know the end game. God's going to come back in the person of Jesus Christ. God the Son set up his kingdom. And that's all the end we really need to know. How we get there, it's going to be tough. But we know at the end of the day, the Lord Jesus will come back and rule as King of kings and Lord of lords. And that's why we're so optimistic here every day on Breaking News. I'm Don Stewart. Thanks for watching. Until next time, as always, may the Lord richly, richly bless.